put out on my story just some questions and uh you, you got a few responses bro so i got a few questions oh. for you via oh. instagram as well um which is cool but anyway right um Sweet. welcome welcome to the podcast um for those who are listening um you know via whatever platform you're listening to uh welcome um really excited about um today or tonight's or this uh guest we have here we're just chatting off air about uh about life and study and uh uni life um with the bro but i'm gonna um hand it over to the bro and he can introduce himself to everyone so kia ora bro kia ora thank you for thanks for having me man i uh, really appreciate it um it's nice to be able to you know spread the word <laughs> um so yeah i'm my name's andy um and i run the page andy's archive which is basically um my collecting or me collecting um vintage new zealand specific clothing um i mainly started it as an excuse to be able to buy more <laughs> and now it's that's got to the point where you know like you have to have to uh downsize because it's just getting out of hand um so for the for the page but we'll get into it eh? like how how where did it all start bro like when when was you can go as far back as you want to as well like from a, a childhood memory oh. even or just when did it all start bro yeah yeah let's do it okay so um so like i was talking uh uh mentioning before i've spent a lot of my life in um retail um but that retail was the recycle boutique here in Hamilton. Which oh, is it in Ham East? Yeah, yep, that's oh, yeah. the one. Um, which I owned and operated with my old man. Oh, wicked. Um, yeah, so that was back in, oh, I think it was around about, must have been 2012-ish when we opened that. Um, and I had like maybe just like over the year before that i'd kind of started getting into op shopping but not not really like in any um i hadn't gone deep you know it was just like a way of finding cool stuff that other people didn't have you know stuff that was like different for what you could buy at north beach or whatever yeah um and then so over the years uh working in the store obviously learned a lot very fast about um vintage gear um that was that uh it would have been not long after we opened that that song macklemore thrift shop song came out <laughs> yeah and that like i'm not even kidding like that was just open the floodgate say like it just i feel like it made yeah i feel like it made secondhand shopping and op Sexy? Shopping. yeah yeah like uh <laughs> maybe accessible to people who felt like they they couldn't you know like maybe that you know they felt like it maybe too hard or um Man. Or like it just wasn't for them um i'd love to see stats on sales bro in yeah, the second hand industry it, it, when that song came out it was like yeah it was genuinely like i probably heard quotes from that song <laughs> for a year um <laughs> yeah so that it was a good time and like um back then there was we had quite a few people who would um you know like go around op shops and um like buy stuff to resell in our store basically um and this was yeah like mid 2010s so there was nowhere near as many people doing it as there as there is now um and even then like some of the stuff we were getting in like occasionally <laughs> i look back through my old uh photos and my camera roll and i'd cry myself to sleep thinking of some of the things that i've oh, you know wow. that i let go at the time and i was like oh if i'd known what i know now i would have wow um it's a few years bro a few years worth yeah man yeah it was a, but you know like i, I didn't know any better at the time like i didn't yeah. know i <laughs> hadn't come to appreciate how hard it was to find some of that stuff um and then yes yeah, so fast forward a, f a few years and um we were getting into like um which they still do now like um 
importing like american vintage as well oh yeah um and that did like it did really well like that was right when that was kind of really starting to um take off in in nz like to the mainstream i guess um and that's uh, eventually um been doing it for long enough that i was lucky enough to actually go to la with them to like handpick stuff a couple of times um and that was just that was just mind-blowing man like the the scale of things over there is just you can't like it's just crazy like one like just one of these like you know um rag house outfits is mind-blowing and there's just so many um so yeah it was it was a good time like you know you go over there and you spend like the whole day just going through like bales or going through racks <laughs> you know just like literally you had like your um your fingertips would be like gray by the end of the day from like the just the unwashed clothes yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. um but it was it was while we we're doing that like that i kind of and this is it's kind of similar to what um josh touched on the other day of when you had him on um as, as you know we're going through all the you know like the polo and like sportswear and stuff mm -hmm. and a lot of it is like it, it it's really it's you know it's it's hard to get really excited about it um yeah. because you know it's 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 quite removed from from us i guess um and it's like it's produced at a scale that is you know that really means it can just be everywhere um it, yeah there really is sometimes there right like it feels like yeah. it yeah yeah and the other thing um that i kind of noticed while we we're there is that that's when the these labels were starting to really like um retro a lot of their new stuff so like the new yeah. stuff ends up looking exactly the same more or less um and so it all just kind of blurs in together um and then but what i was finding was getting me the most excited to find was like these random as <laughs> tees from like you know like a fun run or like some bar in pennsylvania you know from this town you've never heard of um you know just like and that stuff is just like you know it's 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 all so different um and it's i guess it's also nowhere near as is mass produced just because of the, the scale right you know like you you own a bar and you want to make some t-shirts for your mates in the 80s you're you're not going to be you know calling a factory in china and running off a few hundred thousand at a time um and so that was like the kind of awakening and then when we got back i was like wow you know like, i really enjoyed this kind of stuff but we actually have that here yeah um, and you know like that that's exactly the same here it's just a, a lot harder to find um and that was like the kind of the seed i guess um and then like we were discussing before i kind of got to the point where i was felt like i was ready for a change um and i was going to go to uni and study um so yeah so and that's that's kind of when the andy's archive came about so i was like oh well i can do this you know i'm going to be a student i'll i'll be working you know 30 percent of the time at uni and then i'll just spend the other 70 percent driving around op shops <laughs> that, that's what i <laughs> was thinking at the time but it didn't really work out like that sadly um but yeah so i just kind of started as like this is the the stuff that really um you know like have a feel like I have a connection with like gets me excited to find it um and i was just originally just planning to kind of sell stuff from the page as a you know a little bit of money on the side while i was studying really man that's um that 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 i guess journey or pathways isn't what you usually hear like yeah <laughs> i'm like sitting here like wow didn't know that um but it's great to hear that like even though you had say like a, a store right 
you had a store, you were selling vintage stuff and it, you actually went to the States and it took you to, to all of that kind of stuff to realize like, actually, you know, we've got our own stuff and it's, yeah, pretty, right. it's yeah. pretty cool. Like, I love that. Eh? And um, your page in um, One World of Sport really does that for me. Yeah. Like, it, it, uh, I guess it instills a sense of pride as well. I think, yeah. I think that's what it yeah. is for me. It's like, actually, we, we can be proud of this stuff because this stuff is of quality. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's globally yeah. renowned. And like, and then some of the stuff that you find in particular, like ra- some of the old school rally stuff, I'm like, I remember that rally when I was yeah. a kid. Like, should I yeah. remember that? Yeah. Um, and like you say, hey, like one-off pieces, like a guy at a pub just printed them off for him and his mates. But like he might might may have yeah. only printed twenty of them, so only twenty of them exist, and you've got one of them, you know. Like yeah. that yeah. is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I should also probably point out at this at this stage that um, I came across uh, the One World of Sport guys around that time. Like I was still at it was quite early when I was um, at um, Recycle Boutique, and you know, like those two, like honestly. The stuff that they come across is just <laughs> next right. level. Um, right. So yeah, it's, uh, Josh and Jerome, if you guys are watching this, I hope. Um, thank you. And um, they they were really kind of like the catalyst for me in in proving that like it was possible to actually track down that stuff mm. and like that it was still so much cool stuff out there that like you know like i never even dreamed of would have even you know existed yeah um and one of my um it's cool when like i i'm able to sell stuff to other resellers or collectors and especially ones that i look up to and then um it was really cool i got a bit excited i actually never, never said it to the bro but um jerome actually bought something off me and i was like really excited about that because i was like oh shit yeah. like, the, the, like yeah <laughs> kind of <laughs> um yeah it was kind of exciting you don't tell right yeah <laughs> um bro yeah i just love like you talked about um you know the middle of nowhere towns and like these pubs you know off the beaten track stuff and one of the questions is around that too but what is it that you think is like um that draws you to that kind of stuff because i i really i found through vintage clothing that i'm quite big in history like on history yeah. like i, I mm-hmm. love i love the whole finding a piece researching it learning about it learning about what happened you know why how yeah. when um is that something that you you were kind of conscious of as well or, or like have you been yeah, able to man, that not, sort of thing yeah i don't think i was I wasn't maybe super conscious of it when I first started, um, but as time went on, that became almost like that's probably more the the driving factor. Um, like I I really enjoy like getting out of so, so I'm based in Hamilton, um, and anyone who op shops in Hamilton will tell you that the um, you can't. It, it's just saturated competitive um yeah <laughs> and what i really enjoy is like getting out out like way out um to tiny places that might only have like you know like one store but there's oh i don't know like you could you get a feel for like the the, the history of that place you know like there's like you you know, you, there's old buildings on the way there. There's old shops all on streets, old signs. Um, you know, there's old boys walking around in like t-shirts that would be super sick if they weren't pretty much like falling off their backs. Um, and that's yeah, that's kind of like the thing I um, enjoy the most is like going to those those places where you know maybe they haven't changed as much over the time over the same amount of time as you know so as like a larger city has um and you know maybe there's no horrible um fast fashion stores there to 
clog up the op shops. Um, and yeah, like a lot of it, the history is to me probably more important than like the actual finding something, you know, like I'm stoked to go to these places. And if I find something, it's a bonus, you know? Yeah. It's probably a good segue into one of the questions we got from Instagram. And it actually comes from Josh himself. So, um, <laughs> So his question was, I'd love to hear about some of the Kiwi off the beaten track uh, you've stumbled across. Okay. Um, well, I I guess probably to start with, like when I kind of first thought of this plan of like trying to, uh, you know, go get to some of these places, like I didn't really know what I was going to find or even if, you know, these these places would be like like what the picture on my head was you know like you know you can look at a spot on a map or whatever and <laughs> um kind of you know i think whatever you want but until you're actually there you just don't don't know um for me i would say probably like the without um giving too many of my secrets away um <laughs> probably the the like the, the king country area is without a doubt like it is I, i'm not sure if going back if it's like, like going back in time if that's the right word because i don't want to you know be disrespectful yeah. to the people that live there but it is it's it's like what i remember new zealand country towns you yeah. know being like when i was a kid um yeah. and you know just laid back like there's no there's no yeah like no like big chain stores that kind of thing um so there's and like just even just not even that far off the main road you can find like pretty cool um places like there's one this is probably this is not so much clothing related but um it's it's like halfway between uh i think it's about halfway between bennydale and tomata nui there is uh, a place called Waimiha um, which is it's basically like an old sawmill um, like super old um, and it had like it was like a company town so you know it was like the all the workers and everything all lived there and there was like yeah. you know shops and train train station all that um, and eventually um, I think it was when they stopped um uh, felling native forests maybe down that way I'm pretty sure the, the mill shut down but it's it's all still there like um, like trucks still parked there with stuff on them like there's still wood piled up everywhere like the houses are still there um, the office looks like like they just locked up and left and you know it hasn't been touched since um, and yeah it's pretty cool like it's it's a pretty cool place to visit far out it um so i'm in the eastern bay of plenty and like um in kawaru and purpose built yep. for the mill like there was no yep. uh community here until um the mill was actually built and people started moving here to work and stuff so i can um definitely understand because we've had i think over the years a few times where jobs have been lost and um parts of the mill has been shut down Oh, so I can definitely see, like, when you're sharing that, I'm like, yeah, wow. Like, I'm, I'm probably going through that right now in my own community. Um, we're quite lucky, though. Um, like, I think about King Country, they're quite isolated from even, like, close to harbours. Yep. So we're, we're lucky that we're close to Tauranga. So we have a harbour where we can still have some form of industry and still have some sort of employment as well. But man like king country yeah i feel for them down there and like when you talked about a time warp bro i feel so i'm from the city but i'm from hamilton as well and yeah well i moved down here maybe 10 years ago and it felt like a time warp bro yeah. like i was like what is this like it just some of the slang the fashion was like, <laughs> way behind i'm like oh my gosh i definitely know where, you, where you're coming from like i was in uh, Odo maybe last year the year before and uh, Otarahanga and man love that That's place a great example yeah love that place like family yep. owned businesses been in the family for generations mm -hmm. like everything's real 
they've kept stuff for a long time advertising in there it's still from like way back in the day yes. um so and i always um i always find joy in the 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 names of buildings you remember how like old buildings will have the names of like you know oh yeah yeah yep. andy like, and that. sons kind of thing like <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. like um i always find like that stuff's quite interesting to me as well like what's the story behind that eh? yeah like, bro yeah who, who were these people how did they how did they um you know get here what was the story did the sun sell it up yep. and go into a different industry or all of that stuff's real super interesting yeah yep. you ever um so one of the other questions is um like your hauls bro and stuff that you do find and we can get into some sort of like what's been your favorite finds and stuff but one of the questions we got from gears and pairs um shout out to them is best hat haul bro hi brody it's your best hat haul oh that's that's uh it's a no, I think I, it is but i think i can i think i can i think i can pick it so um there was one not oh man um it's it would have been a year or so ago maybe just over a year um i (laughs) i bought this um i was just looking on trade me you know you know as you do um and uh as anyone who who goes on who like you, you know buys stuff on trade me regularly will tell you sometimes the um the best uh, surprises come from the listings with like the worst, most blurry photos <laughs> you could imagine and like no detail at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> you broke. Um, and you just got to pull the trigger and you know, you're either in or you're out. Um, so anyway, um, this person had listed like a, um, it was just like a box of hats. I think they said it was like a hundred or so. And it was just like the photo was literally sure. just like, cardboard box yeah filled up like can't see what's you know no detail at all oh can't see what's gosh. There. um but i think it was it was really cheap i can't remember how much it was so i was like yeah by now um and yeah that was um she they were in um rotorua so i was like oh you know it's a good excuse for the day out kind of thing um so i drove <laughs> drove down there um and get to this person's house and it was uh this, this lady who was selling them on behalf of her dad okay um so i pull up and the dad's um waiting in the garage and <laughs> i walk into the garage bro and i'm not even kidding like there was just like the whole you know like all the um trusses you know it was just hats like all the way around wow up in the roof cavity like all along the walls everything um and just heaps of other cool stuff like old um you know like old signs old cigarette posters and it's basically like what i would want my garage to look like um (laughs) when i was that age um so i was going through the, the the box that i you know like the box of however many it was that i bought and got to chatting with him, you know, and I was kind of just like, um, just uh, chewing his ear off about his setup, basically, um, yeah. and getting some good stories out of him. You yeah, know? yeah. old boy would have loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was real cool. Um, and anyway, he's like, "Oh yeah, we're we're um, you know we're moving, we're downsizing, um, so I've got to get rid of all these. Like I've been collecting them for." Oh man, I think it was like over 20 years. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so he's like, oh, they're all, you know, they're all going to go. And anyway, I basically um, ended up getting the lot off him um, because he could tell that I liked old stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> so I was like, you know. We, we were chatting for ages so, and then so i was like mate you know they're all they're still all hanging up it's gonna take forever to get them down and there was some that he wanted to keep um you know for sentimental reasons which was yeah all good so i was like sweet oh you know what if i come back in a week 
and he was like, yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, so yeah, a week later, went back down, loaded up the car and like, and yeah, that was it. Like, like um, a lot of the time I've found when you, when you um, have these old, old boys that are like collecting hats, which is, it's actually like pretty common, like the, um, how frequently they pop up. Um, but a lot of the time it's like the terrible, no offense <laughs> to anyone who loves these, um, <laughs> like, you know, like late 2000s, um, the old shallow fit six, the classic, like, um, you know, promo cap that any business, you know, makes and yeah. like, yeah. you know, like from like 10 years ago, yeah. um, like a terrible shape, like not really worth anything. Um, and yeah, so mass produced, it's just not even funny. Um, and most of the time, like a lot of these collections, as it's like, you're buying a ton of the, of those, which, you know, have no value for the, you know, to, to get at the, the much smaller amount of like cool old ones. But this guy, um, the ratio was just off the charts. Like his, it was almost all old stuff. Um, and like none, I haven't had another one like it since or yeah, where it's been like that much old gear. Just obviously he had great taste um, and he'd just been collecting for ages. Um, but yeah, so like I've still got, I think that's probably the one that I've still got the most from, like that I kept the most for myself from. Um, and I've got one of them here just as an example. Um, it's gonna be all backwards because of the um, camera, but. So this um, this is from the oh that's from Toke yeah the 1992 Kenleith Strike um, oh. like one of the um, picketers so they must have made these all you know like for the strike organisers that is beautiful um, yeah yeah so that like you know that's a real piece of history right there um, and that one will not be going anywhere I can tell you that <laughs> um. Damn, I, I've been slowly picking up stuff from the mill here in Kaura and I got a um, I actually got Josh a few things because his um, his old man's from here, and like uh, his old yep. man and his granddad worked at the mill and stuff, so I managed to get him a few things. But yeah, um, seeing that Kinleith, um, so my old man worked there at one stage too in his uh, younger days, so it's like oh wow, brings back a lot of memories. Yep. I mean that that's what it's about though right like um what was the conversation yeah, with old, yeah. old boy like? I, um, oh man it was great eh? he'd been <laughs> like um well been, traveled uh, uh yeah he'd been like a sales rep for a long time um and so he covered a lot of ground um and uh, that the, you know this is in i don't know it must have been like the 70s 80s maybe um and yeah just some of the stuff he had like i think he'd he kind of um said that you know, you know he just started collecting them and then like on his over his travels around nz he'd you know if he saw something cool he'd just grab it you know from like a well you know with permission um from a you know business or whatever he was visiting or like and then mates would um, mates of his knew that he was collecting so they'd keep an eye out for him and you know I didn't actually find this one until after I got home so I wasn't able to ask him about how he got it because I would love to know the story yeah. behind how that ended up there man that would be great I remember finding a few <clears throat> uh, vintage caps in uh, Rotorua and wondering like they were all um like a couple of disneyland ones uh some from the states some from hawaii and i was kind of like trying to piece it together like oh, maybe this was like a cruise ship or yeah. yeah like a pacific cruise ship and that's how these hats all ended up together at the op shop all together at once and um like kind of giving me those vibes eh, when you're talking about all these hats that he's collected yeah. love to hear the stories there it would be cool to get like someone like that on on the podcast actually to just have a chat i think josh yeah, is on yeah. i think josh is sorting that out eh? 
I think he's going to get something sorted uh, cool. pretty soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, we'll hit you with one of the other questions, bro. We've got, um, speaking of hats, we've got Kiwi Vincent. She says, Dear Andrew, <laughs> do you ever get sick of 80s bus driver style caps and want to wear 90s? <laughs> oh, man. The thing with those, um, oh, the, I mean, I just love the the designs of like the 80s stuff. I'm finding that that's um, probably the stuff that appeals to me the most, I guess, just because it was like, a lot of the stuff's like real simple, but it's super, you know, it's like the that was kind of the time where it's like, if you, you know, if you owned a business and you, you wanted a logo to go on a hat, you get, you know, like your daughter to do it or like, you know, your wife or something like that um you know like you get like a there's like you're not going to a like a pr agency and getting them to draw something up you're getting like someone with a bit of that you know with a bit of talent to just kind of put something together um and yeah so i don't know like i don't know what it is about i think it's just the simplicity of that stuff that um really draws me uh to it but from a practical perspective i can tell you those when you find those 80s um painters caps the elastican is always gone like always always have to replace it which is a bit of a pain but you know what are you gonna do worth it though hey a bit yeah bro yeah 100 percent um far out it's all yeah i'm just taking back here like you're talking about 80s and I remember I've got all these photos of my parents during the 80s, early 90s, and I'm like, damn, I wish they kept those clothes. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> like, yeah. oh my gosh, dad, bro, you like were styly, dad. Like, <laughs> 100%. Oh man, I got so many photos. Like, I think the recent one I saw, my dad had like a Rasta kind of t shirt on. He was wearing um, Arnett glasses, Arnett's. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Oh, yes. And yep. then he had the Arnett yep. glasses. And then he had a um AJ23 cap on, like Air Jordan 23 Nike yep. cap on. And I was like, damn, bro. Like, if I was wearing that today, I'd be pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, we got Your another. Flexing, bro. Yeah, pardon? Your dad flexing. You didn't even know it at the time. Nah, no idea, bro. And the, my old man's such a giving guy. Like, he gives his stuff away. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of those guys. So nothing would have stayed very long. Yeah, like he wouldn't have had stuff for very long. He would have gave gave it to his uncles or his nephews or his cousins or something like that. Yeah, but, but good on him, dude. Good heart. Um, one of the next questions, bro, we got from Kiwi Grail, one of the bros from Taylor. Yeah, he says, "I've always wondered how much cool shit he leaves behind since he only picks New Zealand stuff." <laughs> oh, this is oh, honestly, man, this is like the the bane of my existence say eh? like <laughs> um but that it, it's kind of like you know once you decide to go in that direction and like you you know you're saying okay this is what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna focus on that you mm. can't really you know deviate from it because yeah, the copa favor <laughs> there's nothing to like differentiate you you know yeah. yeah exactly and like that's that's what i know like um so yeah, I, I, I've, I, when I first started, I'd just buy um, anything I came across that was cool, you know. Um, but then as I kind of progressed, um, I realised that it's only that NZ stuff that that really, um, mm. you know, that's what I want to find. Um, and then everything else can just, yeah, just leave it. To be honest um if i like if i know someone like a mate of mine who's been looking for something or or might be into it you know i'd um probably grab it but i'm giving up on um yeah trying to just stick to the the nz stuff which does mean walking away empty-handed quite yeah. often yeah damn bro is there stuff that you've seen and you've thought to yourself i know for sure that 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 would go for a while but you've just left it just because like you pretty much answered that didn't you yeah yeah <laughs> um 
Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Like it's, yeah, you know, it's either, you know, it's either you're having a great day or you're not. Um, and I just prefer to, and the other thing too, is that if I'm just focusing on that specific stuff, then I've, it's a good way of keeping yourself on track and making sure you've got um, yeah, it's a nice some liquidity. liquidity available in case something presents itself later on, um, rather than buying something you don't even like. And then you yeah. know, like, oh, I've got to sell that before yeah. I can. You've yeah. got to be, you know, you've always got to be prepared. Yeah. I guess to, yeah, I like that. It's like helps with your, um, like almost your curation process too. And like, yeah. this is your guidelines. Yeah. This is what you do. I like that. I had um, a friend of mine tell me she she doesn't spend anything over five dollars. That's her thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh, that's cool, and like she sticks to it. Eh? Like, doesn't matter what it is, even if it's awesome. If it's over five, she's like, not today. Yeah. So I thought that's yeah, that's cool. a good way of um, just you know keeping yourself in line and not not um, letting yourself get because it's a slippery slope. You know, once you start <laughs> um, breaking the rules, or you know, like your your um, guidelines that you've set yourself you end up being able to justify anything and then um you know that's not to say like i still don't look at that stuff like you know i'll definitely um yeah check it out and um be mindful of you know what it is and appreciate it but like there's plenty of other people that are looking for that kind of stuff and yeah. i'm just trying to it's a nice way to look at it eh? yeah i like that there's definitely been times where I've left things on the racks just because I've thought uh, someone else probably could do with that or uh, would appreciate that a bit more. There's been a few times where I've I've come across things and I've thought of you, eh? And I think I've messaged you a few times. I'm like, hey, bro, saw this. Don't know if you yeah. want it. Yeah. Um, and it, that's been really cool as well because, like, knowing that there are other people out there who appreciate these sorts of things. And Oh, mate, honestly, yeah, like, you. that's been the really cool thing about probably the best thing I would say about this page is um, firstly seeing that, you know, like it's not just me that that's into this stuff. Um, and, you know, like there are other people out there that appreciate it. Um, and then also, you know, get um, that kind of acting as a, you know, it brings all the other people out of the woodwork, you know, so like <laughs> um, that you might not necessarily have, you um, have come into contact with so that's been really cool like just finding those other um other people out there that are you know right across the country like same kind of thing just really appreciative of that um the stuff we've got right here in our own backyard yeah for sure man that um yeah like i was saying to you i don't know if i said it off here or on here but i was your page in um yeah one world of sport definitely have like instilled a a pride eh, in, in New Zealand stuff, New Zealand fashion vintage as well. But not even that, like um I, I enjoy some of the photos you take of like um I think there was one photo you took of like a sharing shed. It must be like an old sharing shed or some like off the beaten track place. And I thought I said to you, oh did you buy it like by the land or something? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but i enjoy those sorts of things like yeah, bro. Um, yeah. i think i yeah sorry bro oh no no i was just gonna say like that's been another thing like finding there's so many people that do enjoy that kind of stuff mm, um, heck yeah man because i think a lot of people d don't realize what's out there you know like kind of off the off the main off the main road like they, they think yeah. it's you know if it's just the same everywhere or maybe they don't have the time you know to go and check out some of these places but there is so much um history out there if you know if you look um it's just about knowing where to start i suppose or yeah yeah and like we've we, our country's still quite young but mm -hmm. um there are lots of ghost towns there eh? like yeah there's quite yeah. a few there's quite a few eh? like you just talked about that sawmill one yeah and how there's still trucks there and still wood piles and <laughs> man um it that kind of makes me feel like think about movies and why new zealand's kind of like a 
a really great yeah. place to make films and stuff because we have all this like yeah, natural right. natural scenery but also the you know this industrial stuff as well man that's cool uh, we've got another question bro from briz rugby man he asks what's one of your favorite things that other people would think a stink <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a tough one um probably the um the 1980s painters caps i suppose it's probably the probably the one first thing that springs to mind <laughs> um people either hate them or love them <laughs> um and same with like the um although i think it's coming around a bit now but like the the ringer you know like the tight 80s tees um i love those if i could fit yeah. them there, like i'd so wear them i think there's people are starting to really appreciate them yeah. now um which is cool but still um it's pretty one-sided still <laughs> <laughs> um oh i think i found uh, um actually i might send it to you bro i've got like a jump rope for heart kind of a ringer tea oh yes it's definitely pretty old i can't i couldn't date it but um yeah i think i need to send that one to you because it's just sitting here bro yeah i'll send it to you um man that the you're taking me back here and you're making me uh f- i guess fall in love with our stuff yeah yeah i really i'm starting to really appreciate it a lot more um the more and more i get into this and the more and more yeah. I talk to different people who are like, actually, our own shit is like pretty cool. Like, yeah, man. Um, yeah. So, so I'm, my background, like, at sport and stuff is basketball. Like, I love basketball and played basketball and stuff. So I've always followed NBA and whatnot. And it always interested me that like, when you would see trends, right? And you would have seen that working at Recycle Boutique and seeing the different trends and. Yeah like college stuff coming through football stuff yep. coming through um and I, I would always get uh kind of targeted from from like my dad's generation because they'd be like oh what are you wearing you know like oh this is um boston celtics larry bird singlet and they're like what do you know about larry bird you know oh, yes. you know kind of yes. like and i'm like oh <laughs> you know da, da, da. and then but then they would like grow me like oh yeah what university did he go to and yeah. then I'm like, and then you had to like prove yourself. Hey, like yeah. if you didn't know that shit, like you're 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 Game over. basically they're saying you're a pretender, like you're a yeah. pretender, take it off. You don't deserve to wear that. Like, yeah. Um, and I I'm not too harsh um on like the next generation, but it does get it does like a nice little reminder to me, like, oh yeah, because there are some people out there that are wearing stuff and they have no clue. Yeah like yeah. who they're wearing what they're wearing anyone that actually went there or you know, to the university yeah. and um however if you're wearing something from kinleith yeah <laughs> yeah you might actually know, you know like, someone yeah. from Tokoro, like yeah it's well that's the that's the thing that's the other like the really big thing about it for me is like mo- most of the stuff i sell is like to people that have a connection with that particular yeah, super thing. relatable way yeah like yeah. you know i was like oh my dad worked at this place or oh, i was born in this town and now i live in auckland or you know just stuff like that yeah um and it's it's actually i didn't think that that, that was going to be such a big aspect of it um when i first started but just like it really i think that's you know one of the reasons people are so passionate about yep. the nz stuff is because it does kind of yep instill that connection that is a lot more um oh you know what's what's the word uh it's just a lot stronger than you know yeah. something for like a, it the appeals val- to more people the value's a bit higher yeah in, yeah when it's yeah. closer to home i um i only learned this year that my grandmother on my dad's side my dad's mum worked at the line seven factory when i was still in west Auckland. <sighs> i know bro. i just found out i found that out this year and then i found out that her sister actually worked at the crown lynn factory in new lynn no way i'm like i I didn't know i had no idea so my uh, my my dad's uh my dad's side they're migrants from samoa so like um and then my grandfather which is super nostalgic for me i actually am looking for like old auckland taxi co-op 
um yes like gears like old yeah. school ones because i just remember my granddad always driving taxis and i think for Norpai buses as well was a big one like my granddad was a driver so cool yeah yeah those those kind of things like just now now as you've talked about it this stuff's coming back to my memory and i'm thinking actually i'd love to own something yeah bro. from yeah. fennel pie buses i'd love to own something from auckland taxi co-op and line seven now like used to be like a farmer's brand right yeah yeah <laughs> now to me i'm like holy shit it's line seven like oh cool like um you know trying to find stuff in my size i'm like yeah definitely changed my perspective on the um on Vince's clothing in the game and you know what you've shared basically just solidified this that thinking for me yeah no, that's mean bro um like we one of the things we like to talk about on the podcast is grails and stuff bro and you've probably got not so much grails but you've probably got heaps of cool shit that you enjoy and you like um what's something kind of or what's a few of the things that are kind of stand out for you or, or significant for you um you mean like as in things that i kind of want to come across but haven't oh we could do both stuff you've found um, and stuff you've you know still to find okay um oh so probably oh actually I've got one right here um <laughs> sweet something this is probably like the most uh uh like historic piece that i own i guess um so this is an old and it's, again it's going to be all back oh wow old, um and this is from the oh a, my gosh yeah so that's the it's from the a fundraising concert they did or like a commemoration concert they did for to mark a year since the rainbow warrior yep um bombings yep that was a 19 i think that concert was in 1985 yeah 80, um, 84 was the bombing yeah yeah, yeah. 85 um and yeah so like i i came across that tea um and instantly it was like you know like heavy breathing heart <laughs> so, um and then i actually last year at um uni i did a um new zealand history no paper way. That actually covered that that um slice of nz history i guess in yeah. quite a bit of detail so it was really cool to to you know understand how significant that event was yeah, um yeah. and like you know like what that's contributed so much to how to new zealand's identity now um yeah. so yeah that's probably like the i guess the most the biggest um that's real cool man i have yeah um like talking about a band tea like you know or a yeah. festival tea yeah. like that's a pretty cool one man yeah and not um, just the new zealand history but like that was a worldwide event at that time yeah bro yeah well, my yeah, mum, exactly. my mum was working at the hyatt auckland when that bombing was um when the bombing happened and she swears to this day that she served the french um spies if you will she swears by it eh? she because she remembers um she just remembers these french people talking and um she just said they were weird they were yeah. weird like they had a vibe yeah and i was like come on mom and she's like nah i swear i'm pretty sure it was the bombers <laughs> wow i mean that's still it regardless you know that's that's a connection you know and like yeah well i that's something that i remembered like in terms of educationally my mum told me about that because she swears she knew she yep. served the bombers at the hyatt hotel but i also I always remember 1984 rainbow warrior yeah um let me think what else um probably the the old uh kenley hat is definitely another one um because yeah. my so my father-in-law works there and has done oh, sweet. For many many years um so become quite familiar with uh Tokoro. Yeah. It's a great place. Um uh I do so this is a little bit of have and don't have. Um I have been looking for like foot drop flats gear for like 
<laughs> so that's the number one thing that I look for everywhere I go. Is it like a bucket um, list thing? Like if you can. Yeah, bro. It's yeah, just mean. Because I like I grew up, you know, reading those comics. Um, and like I remember the the movie coming out, and that was just, you know, I mean, what more could you want from a from an NZ movie that gave us slice of heaven, you know? <laughs> um and so I'm yet I've I've managed to pick up a couple of um teas, but what you know, just online, like um and they're not so one's like literally a child size um and the other one fits me but it's quite a uh basic design you know and there's like there's so many diff there, there, there's so many different variations of it out there or that you know that was made um when they were selling that stuff um but it is so hard to find um and especially like I've never found one in an op shop and like I would probably uh, if I found one I'd probably just retire because you know that would be like life <laughs> um, but that's something I'm always you know always looking for um, and I'm hoping I'm going to be successful yeah man manifest that shit eh? put yeah. it out there put it out yeah, to the universe exactly um man that's pretty cool that's not a bad one eh? foot chop flats that's pretty yeah i think anyone would be stoked to find something right like, yeah bro. yeah damn that's really cool talking to different people and like what they consider as you know their grails and it's yeah. all like self-determined right like everyone has their own that they, they like their coffee a certain way same with their, yeah. their vintage you know like everyone likes their vintage a certain way it's I've really been enjoying um just listening and hearing the different people. But foot trip flats would be wicked. What's something that you've um and you talked about it working at the at the store, bro? Like some yep. stuff you let go. What's one of those ones that you've like regretted? Well, um sorry to bring up trauma. No, for you. no, you're right. Um <laughs> it's probably uh, you're just gonna have to rely on my words painting a picture here, but it was a um uh just a classic like 90s tea um you know like big you know bigger boxy 90s oversized thing um but it was for a like a warbirds event in hamilton i think it might have been oh. like 95 94 something like that like at the airport and it had the most amazing back like the whole back was just this huge like hand-drawn um print of you know these um classic planes like dive bombing over you know the the Hamilton countryside um and I was at the time I was like eh it's cool, <laughs> but I've got enough stuff and that's probably the number one thing that I think about the most um so if you're watching this and you have this <laughs> um please get in touch far out um I, 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 there's been a few things that I've felt like I uh, maybe should have held on to, but nothing too like, yeah, nothing too bad. Um, yep. And because I, I'm one of those guys that um, I'll wear it if I can fit it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can't be too fussy. Um, and if I, if I can't fit it, I'm always happy to move stuff on anyway. Yep. So yeah, I don't get too, um, yeah too attached i suppose or um regretful i suppose but yeah it's different when you yeah i can't i, I, I don't think of i could probably fit like five percent of what i find in anyway. <laughs> yeah but i do try my best to like thrift uh a lot of my wardrobe a lot of my wardrobe is but at least half is thrifted now um how have you found that like the thrifting side of it and op shopping do you find that um I mean, as great as a student, I suppose, right? Like, um, you know, money-wise. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit of an interesting one, eh? So, like, when I first started, um, like, just prices overall, I guess, were way were really low, and um, the some of the stuff you could find was just was pretty wild um now like 
prices are a bit higher, but also the I feel like the high price stuff is more better quality. Right. Um, I when I initially started uni, I was kind of like you know, like I said before, like sweet, I'm going to be able to you know go up shopping three days a week, but that hasn't really been the case. Like I haven't really struggled for time, eh? Like um, just because I'm. I think maybe it's because like I'm a bit older and it's like this is my one shot at, at getting a degree, you know, like <laughs> like a you know, like an 18 year old, it's like, you know, if I fail this year, I've got next year kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um so I'm really trying to put that first. Um and I really haven't been out anywhere near as much as I'd like. Um, but I try basically I try and operate at like close to a hundred percent of what I have is um secondhand like besides nice. like basically underwear and socks. Um yeah. <laughs> like only I'd buy, only buy something new if I if I, I suppose if I really needed it for like a for like a time sensitive occasion. Um because what doing it for a few years has taught me is that like if you're looking for something you will get you know, like you will come across it eventually. It's mm. just, you just can't be too precious about <laughs> how long you want to wait. Um, and you, and it is like very, very time intensive, obviously. Um, trying to find stuff for yourself as well. Like it's just, you know, it's a lot of hours to, to invest. Um, but I don't know, like I, I think now, like we're getting to a point where people should be, doing it for the good of the planet yeah um, yeah, yeah sustainability yeah yeah like there's for enough sure. there's enough shit in the world already like go and repurpose some of that mm. um the other thing that's kind of i guess been the big um uh realization for me was you go into an op shop and like you could find a a t-shirt from you know like 1992 and it will be in better condition than oh, someone man. bought in 2015 oh, sure because man the yeah. quality you know the manufacturing quality yeah is so much better i actually had that conversation today with someone like um i've started buying uh, a lot of the clothes for my kids so I've got two kids, one's a teenager, one's a preteen, but going on 25. Um, so she's like, she's just, she was real like, ooh, op shops. Yeah. <laughs> and it took a while to get her to come around. Yeah. Um, and then some of the stuff I'd bring her home and I'd be, oh, hey, darling, do you want this? And uh, the recent one was uh, I brought her home a Bombora New Zealand uh, oh. surf. Yeah, bro, crew. Yes. Such good quality. Um, and the tags, like, everything's real nice. Um, hasn't yeah. made my page yet, but I just, just gave it to my girl. When she's done with it, I'll, you know, I'll look at yeah. move, moving it on, finding it a new home and whatnot. But um, just their attitude towards vintage now has really changed and like talking to them about sustainability and like my son who's 15 now i started young bro um he's like he's i started young bro he's like real um real into like he, he wants he, like, he's like oh where are we going today he's like oh we're just gonna head over to do it for the day because i'm not far from there and he's like oh sweet are we stopping anyway and i'm like oh what do you mean yeah. and he's like you know what i mean <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, bro, you know we're stopping somewhere. Like, yeah. Um, so that's been really cool too. And like, um, he actually reminds me of Rack Diggers in a lot of way because Rack Diggers talks about how his parents like yep. had like um you know unintentionally kind of helped him develop an eye. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Um and the same with my boy now, like he's just going into racks before me, and I get he's quite competitive now because he wants to find things before i do like <laughs> he's like going through the racks i'm like he's like nothing down there mate and i'm like oh so he's a 15 year old bro you know he wants to do everything nice. better with me. yeah so um that's been really cool as well like i guess sharing that with them and yep being able to um have something in common as well and that they know that dad likes that stuff and 
Um, and I think it's real healthy as well. Like, like you say, for the environment, like I'm starting my girl at 10, having this mindset into, you know, if not, um, recycle, like we can repurpose stuff, we can reuse stuff, we can upcycle if we need to, and not just clothes, like it goes beyond right to furniture yeah. and, yeah. um, being crafty i suppose and creative in a way what's something um uh, one of the thing questions i had for you is what's what's some of like the new zealand brands that you kind of like really like or or kind of would kind of gravitate towards um because there'll be some that we i've probably never heard of bro that you probably know know a lot about like what's some new zealand brands that you've kind of thought they made some really good stuff other than um, your usual suspects yeah well, obviously like swan dry rod and gun straight off the bat but everyone you know everyone knows about that i don't think we need to cover off that too much um bombora would definitely be one like there's not much of it out there but it's pretty wild <laughs> um uh what else not so much a brand i suppose but like the the classic um soma textiles hanes 80s tees like the red the red tag um just beautiful uh beautiful t-shirts and they generally always have something pretty cool printed on them um hmm, maybe fairy down i think Oh, yeah. they like they they made some seriously cool stuff um but it seems to be like there's not much of it out there i don't know whether that's because like everyone's you know mums and dads have still got it stashed away um, <laughs> Cheaper. but like they made some wild pieces um that you know like i've there's a fair few that i've seen you know on trade me like once and never never come across it again um yeah they are they yeah i feel like that's probably a good good candidate and like just really well made again like obviously it's lasted you know this long yeah and for sure still got plenty of years left in the tank you think they made that stuff because new zealand is like four seasons in one day like they i think so yeah. yeah i think that's kind of led to a bit of you know that over engineering um yep. And that's obviously you know reflected in the durability of it um and that's probably i guess that's probably the same you know with swan dry as well like they started out that way because they had to be and now you know same thing like you can find one from like the 1970s that's still yeah fully functional yeah i found a um swanee just for myself actually i was really stoked because i could fit it um a couple of holes in it but um yeah, it's definitely got a lot more wear, like, like a lot of wear left in the day. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll grab that. Um, so Swanee, yeah, Swanee's pretty cool. I'm trying to think what else is there, other like Rod and Gun, Canterbury, New Zealand. Yeah, I, I threw line seven in there, like as well. Yep. But yeah, and there's also like a lot of random stuff, bro. Like I've found like made in New Zealand tags and I'm like, never heard of it. <laughs> like yep. looking at a tag. Wow. Never heard of that. Um, but oh, that's... Sea Breeze is one. Um, oh, actuals. Yes. They made like some really, I don't know what they did for their like t-shirts and jumpers and stuff, but they're always just I've really got solid a, made. I found a, a, a Waiho Bay Sea Breeze crew neck recently i was quite oh. stoked about yeah and uh, waiho bay if you're not familiar is where they filmed boy that's where taika waititi oh. yeah yeah so oh. i was like pretty stoked i was like oh choice that's a cool one um yeah sea breeze is another cool one there's there's a few i'm sure we, if we had more time and you could like go through some stuff yeah. they would probably uh, rattle off a few more but tea and ski maybe I think oh yeah yeah um josh brought that up yeah put some of their stuff up um, yeah like he was saying like it seems like there's there's like a few kind of designs from them that you see that are like really common and then there's it seems like there's just an endless variation <laughs> of you know like all these other ones that aren't yeah. super common but yeah it's crazy 
and that's like a you know just like a little old i think they've started in queenstown i think they might even still be there um wicked i love that eh? I love, yeah i love i love um i love the drive up um hawks bay and like going yeah. through the vineyards and look, look looking at a, across it like a lot of the old um abandoned kind of like wool sheds and um uh just i like that drive in particular i mean i live in a pretty cool area too like the bay of plenty but um when you see it every day right like <laughs> yeah bro, yeah, that's it. yeah. <laughs> get a bit mundane um but yeah this has been a, um, an awesome, awesome quarter with you, Brian. It's like really making me think deeper, like about um, vintage clothing and particularly New Zealand stuff. And um, I really appreciate that. But just to finish us off, bro, we're going to, I've got three questions that that's just, um, we can go as deep as you'd like or, you know, uh, yeah. um, or as quick as you want to answer it. But it's just some questions just to get to know you a bit better as well. And, um so the first one is around uh, music bro like just yep. randomly what kind of music do you get into you listen to or even some suggestions you want to throw out there as well uh well pretty much whenever i am driving anywhere it's just locked on the sound um old stuff you know like <laughs> led zip that kind of thing yeah um I get that probably not entirely unexpected given the, you know, the occupation I'm, I've made for myself. Um, <laughs> and then I even actually thinking about it now, probably even the new stuff I listen to is just new stuff that sounds like old stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, they've stood the test of time for a reason. Yeah. Um, timeless. Timeless. Yeah. At, like at the moment, definitely. Um, Led Zeppelin, Bruce Springsteen, probably another one. Um, Roxy Music for a little bit of, you know, soft kind of 80s, easy listening. Um, but yeah, basically anything that plays on the sound. Uh, shout out, shout out the sound. <laughs> um, the second question, bro, is uh, food, bro. What kind of food do you get into? You, you... Ooh. You're not Are too we... fussed? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's all about, you can't be, you got to have some standards, right? <laughs> um, let me think. Oh, I just don't know. I would have to say, oh, all time. So you can, you can do like a, um, you know, something that you'd go out to eat. And then you can do it like a home kind of a home meal, home style one as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, I yeah. think those are separate. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, probably the thing that I think about the most, um, but never get to have, is uh, Avenue Pizza in Tauranga. Um, anyone who lives there will know that it is just insanely good. Um, I got it. Avenue Pizza. Yeah, bro. They're okay, I've got to check that out. They're in the bowling alley in um, Tauranga, and okay. it is just wild. It's so good. Um, and I haven't, yeah, I don't sadly don't get over that way very much but like that is what i dream about when i'm <laughs> craving um and then home uh probably the number one thing i make is just curry a eh? like nice. thai curries um nice. you get a bit of coconut or yeah just coconut cream and like fresh yeah. veg um yeah can't beat it um you, you you get in there with a bit of bread as well like a bit of a naan or some type of bread oh yeah i've i do i started it must have been maybe the very very first lockdown we had how you know when was that last year it's all the weeks are all blurring together <laughs> um, yeah started making like homemade naan it's so easy it's so good yeah um but that was just like a product of of um really wanting it but not being able to get it <laughs> um got desperate eh? yeah yeah um yeah like curry what kind of meats do you carry all, all kinds like uh no kinds i'm plant-based so nice uh, okay tofu or chickpeas is the other good one 
Um, um I love chickpeas, eh? Man, like, um, yeah, I like chickpeas. You can ask people who know me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just the source of protein, eh? Like, um, yeah, bro. Good to snack on. Yeah. Like, um, I was trying to explain it to someone recently, and I was like, oh, you know hummus? They're like, yeah, we know hummus. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't make that connection, eh? For reals? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They, I think they see hummus as a dip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, people don't, uh, yeah, I don't think they, yeah. Um, falafels, uh, what's falafel? I feel like yeah, that's... falafel is um, chickpeas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, falafel, man. If you throw that in a kebab, any kind of kebab, yeah. like chuck some falafel in there, brah goes off goes off um i recently had a conversation so my old man's from the islands he's from samoa and we we're talking about uh diet right yeah. so we're our people are known as big big people um <laughs> fair to say um and but one of the things he talked about was like the diet back home yeah he was saying like uh he was saying bro i think it's what uh what these people call paleo bro he's talking to me he calls me bro and stuff yeah, and he's like paleo, and he's like, yeah, and he's like, um, you think about it, everything we get is from like as whole food. We want a mango, we go to the mango yeah. tree and get it. We want a coconut, we, you know, we want coconut milk, we go get coconut, we milk the coconut, like we get the milk from the coconut. I'm like, oh yeah, it was like we eat the leaves from the taro, we eat the taro, we eat breadfruit. Da, da, da. I'm like, and he's like schooling me up, and I'm like, you're absolutely yeah. right, bro. Like, what the hell? Yeah. And he's like, and then we um all of our meat is either fish or like, you know, or or shellfish or things that we've gotten from the ocean or or it's something that we've farmed in terms of like pigs and stuff like that. Like he really broke it down for me. And I was like, yeah. damn, dad, you you're actually right, bro. Like that is pretty a pretty healthy diet. Like, and then he talked about how back in the day before stoves and ovens were invented. It's like you would only have like one meal a day, so you're basically intermittent fasting as well. Yeah, right. Because yeah. you had to like do the umu or the hangi styles, yeah. you know, to, to cook your koi. Yeah, so it was like big job. You're only gonna do it once a day. Yeah. So you have a one one good meal, um, and you wouldn't eat again till that similar time the next day. So it was basically your you know fasting. But it was quite an interesting um, yeah, to 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 where we are now. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> um uh recently the dirt started a diet but we won't go there bro we'll get onto our third question <laughs> <laughs> um if there's one thing that you could uh could share with i guess the the community um and everyone who may be listening out there like what some doesn't have to be like the wisest kind of <laughs> like <laughs> words that have ever come out of your mouth but what's something that you'd like to i guess kind of like a last word kind of thing and, and share and uh, maybe something around i guess what, what it is you're trying to achieve or maybe you know what you'd like people to to take away i suppose oh no pressure um it is one of those questions eh? like you you're expected to come out with some words of wisdom now like <laughs> yeah um uh well i guess probably like to try and um get out and experience your own backyard um like i think that's probably a lot of people are going to be doing that a bit more uh now anyway because you can't go anywhere else um but like when i started i had no idea that i would see you know some of the sites that i've seen um and like it's amazing what is still out there whether that's you know just like an old building or um you know a bunch of old t-shirts that someone's forgotten about for 10 years um but these things all start from you know going and having a look and going somewhere you haven't been before and maybe not being in a rush you know like it's that is just take your time and see what happens and open your eyes and you'll kind of you might find something you didn't know was there <laughs> Oh, no, no, no.